No, what time is it? It's 2.30. No, it's not. Oh, it's 2.30. <coughs> you talked for two straight hours. I don't think so. Yeah. I, there's two video cassettes of her talk. Because we had to change video, we had to change the cassette. Because we ran out of, we ran out of space. You just never know. She's got a help. I, I asked her to come down to the wall and maybe speak. She lives way up north, and uh, she has gone through some uh, bad health issues and that COVID. She didn't help her. So she's unable. To, she was unable to come down here. Um, she was another one. That was a great story. I put that story in the house. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Juanis Goodfellow paper. I put that story in there and I got more phone calls than you can imagine. So, it's just, you know, it's place, timing. Now, I, uh, I want to tell one, Dave Knapp, who was a United States Marine, a tunnel rat in Vietnam. At a very good tunnel, I guess you could call him good. Uh, he was responsible for capturing a number of large catches of weapons and you know all that kind of stuff. The little guy, real short, skinny, the right kind of guy for a tunnel rat. Now, his last tunnel, they got into a gun battle. If you can imagine that in a tunnel, I don't know how that worked. Because you're not talking about a lot of space, and you fire a 45, and somebody fires a, another large caliber weapon at you, there ain't too many places those rounds are going to go. Plus, the hearing, your hearing's going to be shot. Well, Dave managed to get himself turned around, and he's rushing out of the car. Chest about makes it when two grenades go off. Shattered his legs. Spent a lot of time in the hospital. And he has medals for bravery to prove this. And uh, I was interviewing him, and I said, "You got thrown in jail when you got out of when you got out of the hospital." He said, "Yeah." He said, "I was not a strike soldier. I wasn't going to polish my boots. I wasn't going to polish my brass. And furthermore, I let everybody know about it." Well, you know, in the military, if you let the wrong people know, you're in deep shit. So we spent some time in jail. And he was truly one of the really lost people of the war. He just couldn't get over that experience. He just, the, the experience overwhelmed him. He couldn't work. A lot of things he couldn't do. But he couldn't work, and he refused to go to the VA. And you know the story. I hate the VA, I'm not going to go to it. Yeah, well, okay. How's that work for you? Not well. And we finally convinced him after several years to go to VA. And instantly, he got 100%. Probably because of the PTSD, I'm sure. But he never, ever found himself. Ever. And that's one of the great tragedies of the Vietnam War is how people are lost, how people were lost. You look around Holly, I give you the name of 10 or 15 people who were lost when they came home, and they didn't do well. Mike Phelps was one of them. This will be my last story, Mike Phelps. You see his picture coming out of airborne school, he is a poster boy for the airborne. You know, he is, Stand there in that uniform. He's got those blouse boots, jump boots, and he just—he just looks like a paratrooper. Okay, so he ends up with the 101st Airborne. Oh, guess where they ended up? Vietnam. He has—he's wounded several times. He sees some of the most horrific action, and then they send him home. And that boy, before that boy ever got home, 
he was down the road. He was gone. He was lost. And the first time I ever learned about it, somebody said, here, look at this newspaper article. Here's a picture of Mike Phelps being interviewed by the Oakland Press, the Pontiac Press. And he's sitting there with a pistol, twirling it, talking to this guy. And the look in his eye was like, whoa. If that boy hasn't gone native, it's pretty goddamn close. Well, here's what happened to him. And if you're a mother, you can understand this. They brought all those guys back. They stuck him in the 82nd Airborne. Okay, what happened during the Tet Offensive? The 82nd Airborne was sent to Vietnam, meaning that those guys were sent back to Vietnam, which they never should have sent them. Some of them hadn't recovered from their wounds. Some of them were so psychologically, they were gone. And Phelps, by the time he came home from there, uh, he was truly lost. Now, his mother launched a writing campaign. I have all the letters. She wrote to the President of the United States, every senator, every congressperson, and said, what are you doing? You sent these boys back over there. Bring them home. You know, the 82nd has already seen enough. Fortunately, because of her and a, a whole writing letter, and she had, there's some letters from the President of the United States, and we'd like to thank you. And, your family for your sacrifices and blah, 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 not answering the question. Well, they did bring the 82nd home after about a month, but it's it's too late for a lot of these boys. It was it was too late for Phelps. He never found himself. Ever. I don't think he held a steady job for a long time. He had health issues. He had PTSD. True. You know, beyond anything. The other thing about Phelps is that he kept everything. Now I know about this because in teaching the Vietnam class, people would call me and say, Oh, I got stuff, I got stuff for you, you want to come and get it? Mr. Phelps called me and said, you know, his boy his boy was dead. He's been dead for a while. There were three foot lockers, they were all stacked up, I don't know, in a storeroom. And Mike Phelps' dad called me and said, I want you to come and get these. Well, now, okay. I made a little bit of a mistake. I didn't look at all of them. So I get him back to my house. I had to get somebody's pickup truck because they weren't going in my car. And we get him back to the house, and there, there's, a, there's a lock on I don't have a key. So we cut the lock off, and the first two are just clothing and uniforms and blah, 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 uh, documents and stuff. Uh, the second, the third one was all weapons. Weapons. Grenades, ammunition, pistols, M16s taken apart. And I thought, holy mackerel. What was this boy doing? But he was down the road. And that is one of the great tragedies of war. You know this. I'm, I'm literally talking to the choir here. Can you imagine his mother? You're sending my boy back? Well, not today, they would. They'd deploy people four or five times. But not back then. You didn't get deployed like that. If you volunteered, amen. But those boys didn't volunteer. They just sent the 82nd back. Mike Phelps died in the mid-1995s. Mid-1995, mid something like that, but a series of heart attacks. Those heart attacks are right on the top of the list of Agent Orange. Phelps didn't know anything about it. There was no help. There was no help for a lot of those boys. Now, we aren't the only town that had this happen to them. You pick a town around here, you can see what happened. On that note, I'm going to stop because I know you've all been sitting here a while and I could go on forever. And... Anybody have any comments or questions? Yes, sir. Yes. 
28 years here, 10 out of the new school. <coughs> January of 1972. I was hired, they fired a guy There's a little funny story to this. I'll give it to you. I was running a pizza place in Mount Pleasant, getting ready to go to grad school. We were very busy one night, and I heard the girl on the phone say something that didn't make sound like she was taking an order. And so I stopped and I said, what's happening? This guy wants to give me a job. And I almost said, hang up. I said, no, no, what kind of job? A teaching job. This is really matter. Teaching job. I ran over there, grabbed that phone, flour and tomato paste going all over directions. It was Russ Hatton. How many of you knew Russ Hatton? Yeah, there was a cranky dude. He was pissed off because he had a committee to hire somebody. They couldn't seem to hire anybody. And he got on the phone, he had his secretary get on the phone and call Central Michigan and said, Give me your top two candidates. I was the top one in social studies. I went there the next, had to be there the next day, went, got hired, started the following Monday. Never looked back. Oh, so I missed her. Good. So her success cannot be attributed to me. Anybody else? We had a great audience. Well, there's very few of them in the actual book, because when I have the actors do it, I have to do a lot of other stories. Uh, so,